Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories that are happening right now. And topping the list, witnesses to a deadly collision telling a judge what they saw so the judge can decide if the case against the driver can go forward. And a warning for you tonight, you might find some of the details disturbing. Now the crash happening August 21st along Kingston Pike. Investigators saying in the hours that followed, a man walking on the sidewalk near Concord Street was hit and killed. Later, we learned the victim was Ben Kredich, son of UT swimming and diving director Matt Kredich and Kim Kredich, who has for years advocated to bring better disability services to Knox County schools. Well, today, the man investigators believe was behind the wheel. Shannon Walker was in court for a preliminary hearing. You may remember us telling you how court records show Walker just hours before the crash was reportedly found unconscious by an ambulance crew, given Narcan, taken to a hospital, and then checked himself out against doctor's orders. The issue came up today as the state called witnesses, including police officers, someone who saw the crash, and a firefighter who testified today he noticed a hospital band on Walker, so questioned him about it. He made comment regarding uh, the history of MS, and that, that didn't make sense to me why he would have been in the hospital, uh, the emergency care. So when I asked him again, um, he said, well, it's for similar stuff. And I said, S similar stuff such as what? He said, um, losing consciousness. A baggie that was had substance in the corner of it, it was tied up, uh, that is consistent with drug packaging. And inside of that uh, baggie was a brown powdered substance, which I believe at the time to be heroin or some kind of narcotic resembling heroin. He hit the left front of the van and the pedestrian either hit the hood or the windshield with his head and then flew over the van like a rag doll and landed about 20 or 30 feet. One detective telling the court today that blood was taken from Walker for drug testing, but results are not back from the TBI. The judge ultimately ruling the case can move forward to the grand jury. A big decision in another court case makes our list tonight. Uh, prosecutors in Kentucky have now decided to seek the death penalty against a mom accused in the death of her own 17-month-old daughter. Erica Lawson, you see her mugshot right here behind me, had her arraignment this morning in Bell County. And paperwork along with it includes a notice of an aggravated circumstance as the Commonwealth attorney plans to argue the killing was intentional. This started with the little girl named Elena being taken from Middlesboro to East Tennessee Children's Hospital here in Knoxville on July 28th. She died from her injuries two days later, and Lawson was arrested that same day. Commonwealth attorney Lisa Fugate claimed the child suffered signs of abuse. Fugate tells us today's filing informs Lawson that the state, quote, is seeking to impose the death penalty for what she did to baby Elena. Now, just last week, Southeast Kentucky Community and Technical College announced an annual scholarship in her honor. The Baby Elena Memorial Scholarship will be given to an individual in the Middlesboro community who comes from an underprivileged background or troubled childhood. Our next story for you, hardly a surprise, but still a big move in Tennessee politics. State Representative Gloria Johnson, a Knoxville Democrat, is running for one of Tennessee's U.S. Senate seats. Representative Johnson has been hinting at this for months, but only saying until now that she was considering a run. Now, you may remember Johnson's moment in the national spotlight back in the spring as one of the so-called Tennessee Three, a trio of Democrats who carried gun control protests after the Covenant shooting onto the state house floor. Johnson was the only one to avoid expulsion in response, and that was by just a single vote. Well, Johnson making today's campaign announcement in three stops across Tennessee. The backdrop here in Knoxville Central High School, a location that reinforces Johnson's call for gun reform and safer schools and highlights her personal connection to the issue. The reason we're standing here with Central High School behind us is because I taught at Central High School. <coughs> I taught at Central High School in 2008 where we had a school shooting and we lost a student. I can't tell you the trauma that in do, that came that from that day for the students for the parents for the staff and the teachers i came down to support gloria i think it's time for a change here in tennessee the whole world has been focusing on uh, with the crazy stuff that's happening in nashville and it's just not right we need to do something about it and uh, i'm excited that gloria is running Johnson is running against the incumbent Republican Senator Marsha Blackburn, a spokesperson for her re-election campaign, responding to Johnson's announcement, saying that she would be a, quote, puppet for Joe Biden 
the squad and Chuck Schumer in the Senate, end quote. Now, the message echoed in a social media post that also serves as a fundraising pitch. Frankly, my opponent is a direct threat to our way of life. So I'm asking you directly to make a meaningful donation to defeat her. Now, the election to choose Tennessee's next senator is more than a year away. It's coming up on November of 2024. New information on a case that we have been following for you. A woman accused in the death of a four-year-old has waived her preliminary hearing. That means Brianna Runyons, who was charged with aggravated child abuse and first-degree murder, will now face a Roan County grand jury next month. Runyon's waived her right weeks before her status hearing in General Sessions Court. According to court records, Runyon's told investigators that a young girl identified as Evangeline Gunter and another girl were in her care at a home on Airport Road in Rockwood. They apparently were being punished for not following rules and told to stand in the corner. That's when Runyon says that she removed the magazine from her gun, pressed the barrel into the young girl's chest, and pulled the trigger. Runyon's and her public defender will appear in front of the Roan County Grand Jury when it convenes on October 16th. Our next Big 7 story, a convicted killer asking for parole. A convicted Knoxville killer went before a parole board today asking again for his release. We've told you about Jimmy Ray Curitan before. He is accused of shooting and killing this man, Bill Fry, outside the convenience store that he owned. This was Corner Market in Delhi. The case went cold for six years before Kiriton was charged and found guilty in Fry's murder. And for the past 25 years, he's been behind bars. At today's parole hearing, board member Zane Duncan voted to decline parole because of the seriousness of the offense. The seven-member board will now review Kiriton's parole case. Their final decision expected within a few weeks. If the board declines, we're told his parole case will be reviewed again in two years.